Thank you, Kendall and Shelley. Uh, next, we'd like to bring up the Rochester Raging Grannies again for a song, and then we'll resume with our speakers. Woo! Yay! So, sing along, the chorus is easy. Granny power, we will not be ignored. You don't have to be a granny, but you can, you can see that we have power. Granny power, we will not be ignored. We stand in solidarity with women hear us roar. Now come around a couple of times. down. We have fought and died for voting rights that we're rising up to say that you best watch out cause we've got clout so don't get in our way. Granny power, we will not be ignored. We stand in solidarity with women near us roar. Councilwoman Elaine Spall. Yay. Well, thank you so much. I just want to say thank you. Uh, Bill Maley, wave at us, our friends from Brighton are here. Robin Wilt, wave at us, our friends from Brighton. I want to tell you that in my 10 years on City Council, this park has never been used for a better purpose than today. I love you. Uh, I'm just so grateful. I've represented this district, our east district of our city, uh, for 10 years. But again, this is exactly what this park should be used for. I don't want to budge in the speakers. I just want to be with you. I've been working on getting a homeless shelter open this morning. That's why I'm running around. Uh, we are in this together. I am so deeply grateful to represent you uh, on behalf of all of City Council. Mayor Warren is at Seneca Falls, I understand, and it is my honor to welcome you to our city. Those of you who are residents, uh, welcome home, and those of you who are visitors, thank you, thank you, thank you. Stand strong, stand together. I am no, uh, I, I am not shy, as you guys know, but it is my great, great honor to welcome you and to thank you today. God bless you. Thank you to the organizers. Uh, God bless uh, women and men, we love you all, and children especially. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, and I wanted to take a moment. Uh, Mayor Lovely Warren is not able to be here today. She is in Seneca Falls. However, she did send us a letter, and I'm going to read it. Dear attendees of the Women's March, I am in Seneca Falls today and I cannot join you, but I wanted to take a moment to thank you for coming out today. Make no mistake, we are making history. 
Rochester is the first place where Susan B. Anthony and 14 other women boldly stepped into the voting booth. We are the place where Frederick Douglass helped slaves to freedom. We are the forefront of the civil rights movement, the LGBTQ movement, and yes, the women's movement. On the one year anniversary of the historic Women's March, I wanted to take a moment to recognize all of the women and men who have stood up and found their voice and encourage you to keep pushing and keep persisting. 2017 was not easy, but it was eye-opening. We faced setbacks, at times we saw government at its worst, but we also saw democracy at its best. We saw the amazing things that can happen when people came together to stand for equality and justice and against hate. Last year we celebrated the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage in New York State. This year we celebrate Frederick Douglass's 200th birthday. In doing so, we celebrate how far we've come, but also recognize how far we have to go. I like to think that Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass are smiling today, knowing that their legacy is alive and that we continue to fight for justice and equality. And we do it in their honor. So keep working hard, keep writing letters, keep making phone calls, keep making your voice heard. Change doesn't come quickly and it doesn't come easily. But when we work hard and work together, as Susan B. Anthony said, failure is impossible. Yeah. Sincerely, lovely A. Warren. Our next speaker, Mercedes Mike, is the education organizer at Metro Justice and AQE, the Alliance for Quality Education. Recently married, Mercedes is a parent of the Rochester City School District. Before coming to her position at Metro Justice, she was a teacher. Please welcome Mercedes, who will speak to us about public education. How y'all doing? Uh, I want to do a shout out to the Raging Grannies. You guys are awesome, and I hope that someday I'll get to join you guys. Hi, my name is Mercedes Mike. I am the education organizer at the Alliance for Quality Education and Metro Justice. I want to start off by saying I am honored to be here with all of you today. The most meaningful voices that should be heard are those of our parents and students. As a parent, I want to raise my voice to the powers that be and let them know that what you are providing Oops, providing children in low income and communities of color is not enough. No. I am afraid for my daughter, I'm afraid for yours, and I am determined to do whatever I must to ensure my child and yours get the excellent education they deserve. Anything less is unacceptable. Yeah. I was asked to speak about the state of our education system under the Trump administration. Let's be very clear here. There is a difference in philosophy about our children and who is responsible for the delivery of an excellent education. Trump has made his position clear. He has repeatedly said he wants to shrink the federal role in education and give more opportunities to choose for parents to choose their children's schools. He and his anti-public sidekick, Betsy DeVos, have began to work on their dark agenda of cutting the U.S. Department of Education. I have a warning for all parents. This is a direct attack on us. It's a direct attack on our children. If our children are 20% of our population, yet 100% of our future, this is also an attack on the future of our country. Now, for those of us not paying attention, words like choice sound good. Who doesn't want choice? We are all consumers. When I go shopping, I want choice, sure. Unfortunately, Gucci, Armani, and Chanel might be choices for some, but definitely not the kind of stores I can afford to shop in. Instead, you might find me at Payless, Rainbow, or if I'm feeling really good, Marshalls. <laughs> in our current education system, the color of your skin and the zip code you live in determine the kind of choice you get. Sure, Trump wants to give parents in our communities a choice. He is offering to parents in our communities the opportunity to choose the education equivalent of pay less or rainbow. Honestly, in order to make every public school a source of excellent education, funding comes into play. What many people fail to understand is that the federal government's investment in public ed education is minimal. About 
92% of all funding for public schools is left to states and localities to determine. The Trump administration is trying to shrink the already small, approximately 8% of funding they provide the schools. Of course, that would be in order to give his wealthy cronies and CEOs more of an opportunity to rake in dollars at the federal level at the expense of our children and our country. What do we do as a people when we are attacked? We stand up and we fight back. Today we are fighting back and building a resistance. We are building a resistance to an administration that lines up the pockets of their billionaire friends as they eat lobster and shrimp while leaving our children hungrily staring at an empty table that stretches for years to come. We are building a resistance because we understand that to fashion the future we must invest in our best. That that is each and every child whose dreams can no longer be deferred by a chief with no clothes on. We are building a resistance because we the parents, the students, the teachers, and the masses demand an equitable education and we won't stop until our children are safe, secure, and well educated. Thank you.